Hi, welcome to my first video for Javelin Content Management. Um, thank you very much for watching the video and thanks for coming along to the channel to watch. Um, I started Javelin Content in mid-January this year, 2023. And I did so because I wanted to do more of the things that I enjoyed doing. I spent much of my previous life working in corporate retail. Um, everything from store management through to national strategy. Um, and I was fortunate enough around three years ago to be given a, an opportunity to work with a, a small, uh, but rapidly growing AI startup, um, the guys at the modular analytics company and Jimmy Horsang particularly, uh, reached out via LinkedIn, offered me a job. Long story short, at six weeks later, I was working remotely from home for the first time in my life. And I thoroughly enjoyed the challenges of the new position. Um, I was fortunate enough to be given quite a lot of leeway in terms of how I wanted to do um, the, the job that I'd been given. I was given a lot of scope to build out my own um, role and what I was doing for the business. And my primary role for the business was sales and business development, amongst many other things. So. Coming from a retail background, I really had no idea how to get out and make an impact, let alone in an AI company. And when you consider that the industry that I was looking to, to get involved with and penetrate into was the contact center industry somewhere, um, which I knew about and I knew a little bit of, but had no real world experience in that. And push came to show, um, you know, targets need to be met. And I was very passionate and still am about that business. Um, and it became clear to me that I needed to be creative in order to get the goals that I needed to achieve. And that was never going to be reached by traditional outreach approaches. And um, the sorts of people that I was reaching out to were C-suite director level positions who very rarely answer phones, very rarely answer emails, very, very rarely answer connection requests and, and LinkedIn messages. Um, and I've tried everything. Um, much like I would imagine many of the businesses who are sat watching this, I tried everything to reach my ICP, my ideal profile. I eventually settled on the idea that I enjoy networking. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy telling stories. I enjoy hearing other people's stories and I enjoy understanding how I can help other people. So I built some networking events and they went really well. We generated a lot of conversations from them. And I realized that actually that was a quite a good way forward. Fast forward a little bit of time. And I realized also that I could do live stream events. We we're very, very nerve wracking to start with. But once I got used to um, running those events, actually what they allowed me to do was to leverage the expertise of my guests. I have no real pedigree in the contact center world. I have pedigree in leadership, which is great doesn't really play into the technology that we were selling at that point. Um, it does to a point, but not, not enough to make the sale happen. So I needed to educate myself, first of all, on the industry and associate myself with some of the biggest names in the industry. And I built that step by step. Um, we built a, a, a live show on a Thursday. Um, we, or I, <laughs> I interviewed the guests um, week in, week out. And it was great fun. I met some amazing, amazing people. And, and they were kind enough to share their time, share their opinions and share their expertise. And every conversation I had after that lent their expertise into my own thinking and, and, um, strategy as to when I was talking to people and made me much stronger in terms of being able to do the work that I was set out to do, but there was still a, a bit of a sore what, like we were doing this on a Thursday. It wasn't generating huge numbers of views. It was, it was doing all right for itself. Um, but I knew there was something else to kind of get to this. Um, meanwhile, I've grown from sort of 500 followers on LinkedIn to 17 and a half thousand, just, just ticked over not long back and what's well, 18,000 now. Um, and that was hard work, especially to start with. Um, it was, it was really brutal going, um, people didn't want to connect with me because, you know, I didn't have enough mutual connections in the industry. Um, didn't have a background in contact centers. Why should I connect with you? All these sorts of things. And that's very clear, like, you know, me now sitting here as the founder with, with the founder title turned on on LinkedIn with the amount of pitch slaps that I get, totally understand it. Um, 
And I knew there had to be a way to use the recordings that we were making, the live events that we were recording and, and, and all those things, and use them as leverage to get people to open their doors to us. Because genuinely, we were a networking first approach. I wasn't interested in making hard sales to the wrong people or selling the right technology to the wrong people, the wrong people, the wrong technology. I wasn't interested in any of that. I wanted to know what people's problems were so I could help them. And where there was an opportunity, then I wanted to sell in. And I still think that that should be everyone's approach because that's what builds relationships. Unfortunately, it doesn't have quick results. And that's what everybody seems to want. So what I started to play about with was, um, can we use the content, chop it up into lots and lots of pieces and use that as posts for LinkedIn so that I can become seen more as an expert on LinkedIn, but also to take away some of the owners of having to write LinkedIn posts for four separate accounts that I was looking after at the time, which is no small feat. Um, and the answer is yes, it does. But I actually ended up, instead of spending 20 hours a week writing LinkedIn posts for four separate accounts for five, six, seven days, I spent 20 hours a week clipping up content, which wasn't fun, didn't enjoy it, and it wasn't easy to do. And I kind of swapped you know, one, one bad thing for another. It was out the fried pan into the fire and start to experiment with technology. One of my, one of my big sort of passions in life is taking two pieces of technology and making them work together, figuring out what it is about this technology that makes it really great. What are the limitations and can I mitigate those limitations by combining it with some other technology that, that kind of takes that away and, you know, hands on heart, AI and smart technology has made leaps and bounds over the last couple of years in this content space um, to the point where I took a 20 hour week of content production down to around five or six hours a week, including writing posts, including getting it scheduled and getting it on there. And some amazing things happened while we did that. So not only were we becoming better known on LinkedIn, but the people who we were getting the content out to we're starting to respond. So when they had a need for our services, I was starting to get inbound inquiries. Oh, hey guys, we need conversation analytics. I remember seeing your post on LinkedIn, just must be serendipity. Let's chat. And that happened too many times for me to write that off as coincidence, right? Um, so what I started to realize was the content, because I was leveraging the expertise of other people, was making me appear as an expert and a trusted source of information combined with networking and sales development skills that I had, it built a really good basis to then start having conversations with people, it built trust. People knew me, liked me and trusted me, not through anything I particularly said, although obviously I did share as much as I was able to, that was relevant, but because I'd associated my name with so many other great people. And once we came to that understanding, it became obvious what we needed to do was not just to do that with guests outside the show, but also to build a podcast on the side that showed the expertise of our CEO, Jimmy. And both of these things combined created more content than we'd ever need. Once I got down to the, the you know, the automation of the process and getting it just right and understanding how it can do things really quickly and getting my knowledge up to speed with what was causing different problems with things and, and understanding the platforms. We just ended up with so much content that we almost, we, we were probably were not almost, we were guilty at one point of going too far with it all. We were, we were hammering, I was putting out three posts a day at one point because I just couldn't get enough content through the doors to use it all up. Um, so I think there's a fine line, there's a fine balance there, but what I learned, and this is the upshot of all of this is that content management and content marketing is far more efficient than anything else in that business. And the reason for that is because it positions you as the expert, as the brand authority on what it is that you do, the industry you're in, and the problems that you help with. When your clients come to the point where they're ready to buy technology that you sell, services that you sell, products that you sell, they will already know you, like you, trust you, and you'll be top of mind when they hit that buying window. So instead of going out scattergun approach to um, telesales and email and called outreach, which by all means do do those things in the right way, you know what I'm saying? 
do those things. They're part of the mix and the necessary paid media, all of that. I'm not saying don't do it, by all means do. But content particularly has a way of shaping that funnel much better than any of the other marketing that we used. And what it did was it brought people who were ready to buy to our door, a time they wanted to buy, where they'd already done some research, they'd already qualified us as a vendor, and we were then either on our own and the only person, the only business selected, or we were one of two or three who were in a competitive process. Whereas previously, we would never have been considered. We'd have lost all those opportunities because we just weren't even present. And I think this is a beautiful opportunity for businesses to use content management to get in front of the other 95% of their audience on social media channels, not just LinkedIn, everywhere, and get across to the 95% of the audience that you'd miss by either just doing a podcast once a week and putting it out there and hoping for the best. Everybody does that. Or um, just relying on paid media or LinkedIn posts that you've written yourself half past eight in the morning trying to get photos of your dog in because you know it'll get more likes. It's not about getting more likes. And um, so, yeah, I think it's clear for me, you know, I, I generated over 200 leads from content in, in the two and a half years I was there. Bear in mind, this is enterprise SaaS. It's fairly high ticket stuff, fairly complex technology, and it's got a year sales cycle in some cases, depending on who you're selling into. So to generate that amount of leads means we were definitely doing something right. And the vast majority of those leads came through me, through my network because people saw me all over LinkedIn because they went to our C-suite because they saw them posting all over LinkedIn. They were top of mind and it almost became a bit of a running joke that we owned LinkedIn, right? There are something like 900 million people who, who have an account on LinkedIn. There's only something like 2 million people globally that post on a regular basis. Imagine how that extrapolates to your industry. It's outrageous. And it's a great opportunity for you to capitalize and bring home the bacon for your business. Content marketing is by far the most efficient and productive form of marketing for your business, especially for small scale startups, scale ups, and small to medium business. Obviously, when you get to enterprise level, you're going to have your own marketing department. You're going to have an agency that you work with, all the rest of it. You've got those $10 million to spend on that sort of thing. Brilliant. Okay. You know. The sorts of work that I do is never going to compete with those big agencies in quality. And that's something else to touch on. You know, everybody talks about quantity versus quality for content. Um, and everybody votes towards quality, rightly so. Everybody should go towards quality first. That should be the first place you go to, but it shouldn't be the only thing you aim for because quality without quantity means you're not getting in front of. The other people who only view LinkedIn or your social media platform on the days in between you posting. And some people have, you know, very strict routines. Some people are at work those days. Some people are off those days. The other thing is people tell me all the time, oh, but my client's not on LinkedIn. My client's not on such and such a channel. They are. You just don't see them. You don't hear from them. They don't like your stuff. They don't comment on your stuff. Why? Because the moment they do, you're going to pitch slap them. Oh, I see you're a, you're a CEO at my, my ideal, you know, profile. Like I'm going to reach out to you and see if you want to buy my stuff. And it happens all the time, whether it's you, whether it's somebody else, doesn't matter. That's what those people are conditioned into thinking. Let's be honest. If somebody who you don't know, who works in a vaguely a market and sales or technology platform business reaches out to connect to you and puts a message in your connection request, what is your first thought? Because I know what mine is. There are much better ways of doing things. There are much more efficient ways of doing things. Content marketing, bang for buck, is the best investment that you can make for your business. And I mention a lot about LinkedIn here, but it's not just about LinkedIn. It's about creating digital assets that are suitable for any social media. So, you know, making sure you've got the portrait, nine by 16s, the 16 by nine landscape, the, the one by one sort of um, squares. Between those three, you've covered pretty much every social media platform that you've got. Um, and it's about kind of finding the right mix of what you post about. So yeah, I help people create interviews. That's, that's part of what we do is, is creating the interviews from the leaders where I download their brains into a 30 minute 
episode of something, a podcast, a live show, even just a, a fireside interview. But the point is that I'm downloading their information because they're the experts, not me. You know, I can go away and write LinkedIn posts. I don't know whether it resonates with their audience. What I do know is that they're the most passionate, enthusiastic, and motivated people in their business. And they're there because they have a strong belief in something. And that's why they started the business. You can tap into that in your business, extract that information out, and then turn it into content. You've got three quarters of your content there for the whole year. Then all you have to do is add in things like um, talking about your products and services, because yes, you should talk about your products and services. Again, that's something else that, that people go back to is um, you shouldn't talk about sales. Don't talk sales. Are you mad? Of course you should talk about sales. How on earth will the people who, who will buy from you know who to come to if you haven't told them what your products and services are? You've got to talk to them about your products and services, but you just don't ram it down their throat seven days a week. So creating the content, focusing on your client's challenges and how they feel about those challenges, how you fix those challenges and how they're going to feel afterwards, because that's what they're buying. They're buying that feeling that they're going to get when you've solved their problems. They're not buying your software. They're not buying your products. They're not buying your services, they're not buying you. They're buying the feeling that they want to get to when you've solved their problems, their KPIs are green and they've ticked the box at the end of your appraisal. That's what they want. Or when they've got their promotion because they brought in the technology or the services that, that led to the problems being solved. But yes, ultimately the sale starts with people buying you. And that's why it's important for a lot of the content to be based around people. People buy from people, people prop people. Seeing your face on social media is far more likely to convert people to a sales opportunity to gain trust, to gain knowledge of them than just a, a picture of products or um, some text and a post. By all means, text posts are a great way of communicating and I use a lot of it myself. I'm very comfortable with it and it works really well, but it doesn't replace getting your face in front of your clients. And the last point is everybody assumes that, um, that the technology that, that um, creates content at pace is really expensive, really complicated, or doesn't exist yet. And that you need to have years and years and years of um, being a virtual assistant or a digital marketer to, to be able to create anything at any pace. And anybody who does that is going to charge them a fortune or, or the quality of the content is going to be rubbish. It's not true anymore. Platforms have probably still got some way to be in. They've got to go some way towards being more user-friendly still. And it's been worked on. Or I've seen some dramatic improvements. But the addition of things like AI into those platforms to help speed up those processes has been absolutely transformational over the last couple of years. I've got less than three years experience in doing this. And like, I've got no problems with landing clients. I've got no problems with, um, how fast that work gets processed for my clients. My clients love the work. Um, if I can do that in three years, you can. And the point of this video isn't to get you to buy my services. It's to show you that there's power in those services and, you know, I'm going to do some more recordings over time where I show you some of the processes that I use and how I do things to speed processes up and what a quick way of doing things are, some of the tools that I use, um, and I'll be able to give you the links for the tools themselves. The point of it is if you can listen to what I do and go away and do it yourself, brilliant. I've helped you. I'll sleep well at night and you were never my client in the first place. So brilliant. If you can do that, I'm absolutely, I mean, and I'd love if somebody does that on the back of watching these videos, I would love you to reach out to me and let me know how you got on, where you went from, what you went to, what it did to your metrics. Um, because I know it'll shorten your sales cycle. It'll increase your qualification of your early stage clients. So your conversion rate from initial conversation will improve and it'll increase your win rate because the people who come to your door will have already done their research. They'll already know you. They'll already trust you. Sales cycle gets shorter. People convert better. And it's a much simpler process. However, if you're watching the video and you give it a go, and, and like many people are, and you're not alone in this, is not criticism. 
if you give this a go and you rubbish at it because you're just not technology minded, you haven't got enough hours in your day, you want to get somebody in your team to do it, but there's nobody who's got the right skill mix. Um, they don't have time to do it. You don't want to bring somebody in especially for it because it's too expensive to do that. You don't want to go to a big agency because they're too expensive. You're probably my client. Come along, knock on my door, let's have a chat. I'll see where you're at. If I can fix your problems for you and tell you how to do it quicker, I promise that that's what I'll do. On the other hand, if you can't, then you're probably my client. Let Javelin take the weight off your shoulders. I'm a big fan of people doing what they're good at, what they're passionate about, and what they set out in business to do. And we get sidetracked all over the place. I've done it. Get sidetracked all over the place. You start off with a great idea, a great product, great services. But now I need a website, so I need to become a website developer. I understand people who build their own websites, and some people can. Some people build really good websites, and they've got that talent, they've got the time, and it's the right stage. Again, brilliant. But if you're not a web designer and you want something good, you know you need to go to a professional to do it. Just get it done. Just get it out the way and done with. Give it to somebody who can do it in next to no time, who will charge you a reasonable amount and who will guarantee the quality standard to their work. Exactly the same with content management. I want to give you your time back. All I want to do is take up half an hour a week of, of one of the leadership's time a week and I will turn that into so much content that you can't breathe. Right? Your website's going to have it. All your social media is going to have it. And the best part is doing it that way is it drives your content strategy for the whole business. Because all you have to do is theme that one recording and that one recording then for the next week powers all of your social media channels with the same topics and the same conversations. So there's a theme now going on. You can even put it on your website, stream it on your YouTube, you've got it on your Twitter, you've got it on your Facebook, you've got it on your LinkedIn. Great, all talking about the same topics. Then the next week you record the next one, the next topic goes up and you move down a story and a narrative, which is something else a lot of people fail to deliver on. They just don't know how to deliver that narrative to get people to the point where they understand them enough to buy. And then lastly, if you're the sort of person that's looking at this thinking, I love what the guy's saying, but there is no chance I'm even trying any of that. I just want to pay someone to do it. Brilliant. Drop me a line. It's as easy as that. And um, I hope everybody's found the, uh, the video interesting. Um, like I say, I'm a big fan of networking. I'm a big fan of relationships. Uh, and at the end of the day, I sleep easy because my passion, my, my why, I guess, is to help people make better decisions. Um, took me 39 years to realize that I'm 40 now, right? Took me 39 years to realize that my passion was to help other people. All the jobs that I'd ever done before were based on the fact that I enjoyed the bits that I did and the bits that I enjoyed. We're helping people. So I'm just doing something I enjoy doing. If you're a client, great. If you're not a client, fine. Um, I look forward to hearing from everybody. What I want to do is build a bit of a community around this. I want to understand who's doing things, what tools else are out there that I'm not using even, because, you know, who's to say that there's not something out there that I've not seen before that, that is amazing and groundbreaking and I should be using. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on tools, automations, what you do. I want to hear from other digital marketers out there. I want to know what your tricks are. Um, how can I improve? How can I help you improve? Um, what are the challenges you're facing in your industry with your content that you'd like to solve the problems for? Maybe I can't help you solve those problems, but maybe I can put you in touch with some people who can. Um, I'm a great believer in connecting people. I'm a great believer in paying it forwards. Um, Thank you very much for watching the video and uh, lots more content to come. I have to live and die by my own sword, right? Um, so here I am. Um, thanks very much. Watch out for the next video. Hit subscribe. Is that a real thing that I have to say now? I'm going to be on YouTube. Yeah, hit subscribe um, if you want to see more of the content um, and genuinely reach out. Um, Paul at javelincontent.com. Thanks very much.